So good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Um, we're going to start today uh, with the webinar of the model of investigation and response uh, using Cortex Excel. Um, a few notes uh, before before we start. Um, the call is going. The webinar is going to be recorded and uploaded to the live community. So uh, you'll also get a copy of it. So you're most welcome to uh, watch it again if needed. Um, at the end of the um, at the end of the webinar, uh, there will be a short survey that uh, we would love if you be able to fill it out. Um, the surveys and your engagement is one of the items that have made us uh, uh, this uh, conduct this webinar specifically for JPAC, uh, and also um, in order to show the captions and the translation, I uh, feel free to follow the instructions in this slide um so uh let's begin with a short introduction and uh, my name is bar bar Zil, product manager for cortex exo um been in the cyber security space for over a decade and in cortex exo for over five years um at the recent year i'm a product manager and driving the cross functional organization alignment to support uh the business the product objectives and of course uh, you, our customer base, um, and I'm going to lead it to Sasha. Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Sasha. I'm a security architect here in the Palo Alto's R&D team, and um, in the cybersecurity field, at least ten years in different uh, f um, uh, different mm -hmm. jobs, titles, SOC analyst, SecOps, SOC manager, whatever you like. Uh, currently leading the malware investigation and response top use case effort. And markets here. Hey guys, I'm uh, Precious Pariga. I'm your senior customer success engineer here. I've been into the automation space and XO for uh, seven plus years right now, and uh, happy to assist you guys. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is Shrikant. Uh, I'm part of the customer success uh, team uh, at Palo Alto Networks, uh, supporting XO. Uh, I have been uh, working on XOR for over four years, and as part of customer success, I work with customers, uh, helping them to adopt the product and utilize the new features and uh, you know new capabilities of the product. Thank you, Tim. Happy to have you here. Um, what we have for the agenda today, um, we're going to try to try and make the demo and the actual demonstration on XOR as long as possible. Uh, but before we're going to do that, I want to give uh, some brief explanations about the marketplace themes, the top use cases, and what drove us to take the decision to dive deeper into the model investigation and response use case. Um, I will do uh, the intro, and then I will leave it over to our customer success engineers uh, uh, to demo. Uh, of course, we're going to leave time for Q&A, uh, but if in any case, you have questions, feel free to put them at the Q&A tab, uh, so we'll be able to uh, answer them. Um, so the theme is that um, we want to excel our, uh, our customers uh, first time to value. Um, and in order to do so, we need to uh, give them out of the box, to give to you guys out of the box, top security use cases, which are designed with the market leading platforms and tools, um, which are partnered with customers, SMEs, with the vendor themselves, if possible, to ensure we're providing a compelling automation capability. Uh, we want to have the playbooks as easy as possible to plug and play with your custom playbooks, as we know that there is no one size fits all uh, with regards to uh, SOC automation. Um, we want to build it for easy adoption, uh, including the classifiers, the incident type, the layouts, the widgets, and of course, we want to include rich supporting documentation, uh, demos, uh, visual guides, checklists, starter guides, and of course, webinars such as this one, so it would be to, as easiest as possible to adapt it. Um, so, some marketplace data uh, from our telemetry. Um, on the top left, you can see a graph of the number of use cases implemented uh, by our customer base. Um, we have many uh, 
with more than five use cases, uh, which use the system, uh, use Cortex Excel, and do a lot of things with it. And we have uh, some customers less with uh, one use case. Um, those one use case is usually efficient. Um, and when looking at the use, the what use case customers automate, we see that uh, 184, which is about half of the telemetry data that we have looked at is adopting phishing, but we have an extremely long tail and we have an opportunity uh, to automate something. Uh, we're looking for opportunities to automate use cases, which are of use to uh, a wide variety, a wide number of our customers and provide valuable, um, valuable uh, automation for them. Um, in order to provide this valuable automation, they need to have uh, integrations which are related to those use cases. So for example, if they're not using their firewall um, within Cortex Excel, we'll probably not create a network operations use case. Um, looking at the most used, um, uh, at the most used uh, integrations enabled from our marketplace, we see uh, TI, threat intel tools, uh, supporting functions, um, exchange um, and EDRs, um, which, have, uh, which have guided us into um, going first into the model use case and investigation pack. Uh, we have also um, uh, did surveys in our um, EMEA and JPAC user groups, um, which have also have been highly voted um, to do the model investigation response use case. Uh, the last item, uh, which is related to it, um, is that malware, by talking with SMEs and SOC leaders um, uh, in, the, in the community, and of course, as part of our customer base and uh, design partners, we've realized that many have the same flow uh, for investigating uh, malware incidents. Um, they're all doing, uh, they're all getting the uh, alert from the EDR or from the SIM. Uh, then they're doing the triage by extracting the information, um, enriching the IOCs, detonating the related files. Um, then they're doing malware analysis and, and forensics, uh, deep forensics um, with uh, um, threat hunting tools. Uh, they're setting the, the verdict of the alert and then they respond, um, containment usually, and sometimes even um, remediation from within Excel. Uh, so the containment would be usually to, uh, to kill the process or to isolate the, um, the endpoint, but the containment is a bit bigger uh, to delete the file over all of the EDRs um, or engage the IT team to, to do a disk wipe. Um, and of course, um, as part of the closure and the lessons learned uh, from the in investigation lifecycle, uh, we're mirroring everything back to the EDR. Um, we're closing all of the open tickets. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, leaving uh, the option to the SOC team to, to improve and capitalize uh, on the, the incident and how it went. Um, so this is the motivation for the uh, model investigation and response uh, use case. Uh, we're gonna have more planned and we're gonna of course have rules documentation and webinars on them as well. Uh, but with that being said, I want to uh, move, uh, move it right back to the CSEs uh, to demo it. Thanks, thanks Bart. So uh, let us now look at uh, you know uh, the malware use case and uh, how to uh, deploy it and how to start with uh, configuring it and you know how to uh, and then we'll also look at uh, a sample incident uh, how the playbook executes and what are the different actions it can take as part of the malware investigation pack. Um, so to install the malware investigation pack, uh, you know you, you you the process is still the same. Uh, you can go to your uh, um, just a second. So, yeah. 
so you can go to your marketplace in Cortex XO, search for the malware investigation pack, and uh, just click on this. Uh, so if you notice uh, from version 6.8, you will see that uh, the information uh, provided as part of the uh, of almost most of the packs is much better. And you will now also be able to see embedded videos. So you can get a lot of information uh, just by browsing through the pack itself. Uh, you have all the information about the pack provided here, what it does, what the pack can do, uh, some sample screenshots and everything, right? Um, so uh, as part of the pack, uh, you know, just like other packs, uh, you can definitely go look at the version history to see when it was started, what was the, uh, you know, latest uh, additions and everything. So when you go to install the pack, the difference that you will see on this malware investigation pack, if you are in XOR 6.8 or above, when you click on install, the deployment editor is already, you know, uh, uh, there and you will get an option, right? So uh, as uh, uh, as we mentioned before, this pack out of the box can work with some of the leading EDRs. So if you have CrowdStrike Falcon or Microsoft Defender or Cortex XDR as your EDR, you can choose the one that's relevant to you. In this case, let's go with XDR. And then you can also start choosing all the other dependent uh, integrations that you want to use as part of this pack, right? So for example, Sandbox, uh, you have the option of Wildfire or CrowdStrike. Uh, you see that this is already selected because Wildfire is installed. Uh, you can choose uh, if you want to send emails, what is the email, you know, what is the messaging app that you're using? Uh, if you want to go with case management, what is the case management tool that you're using? And uh, you know, uh, as part of the threat intelligence, what are the integrations that you want to use? So you can choose all of these packs and click on continue. So in one shot, uh, all these packs will get installed, right? So previously, uh, you might have to install one pack and then find out what are the dependent pack and then install it separately. But here, uh, you know, everything will get installed in uh, you know, in just one shot. So let's just wait for the installation to complete. So once the installation is complete, we will then go into the deployment editor and see how to configure uh, the pack to make it operational. All right, so as soon as you installed, you see that the deployment wizard appears, right? So let's now go into the deployment wizard. So in the deployment wizard, the idea of this deployment wizard is to, you know, it's it's very similar to how we have the installation wizard in Windows. So you have a step-by-step -step of what are the things that you have to do to make the pack operational, right? So if you remember in pretty much all, all our packs, the pack comes with a lot of content, right? So you have the integrations, you have the playbooks, you have classification and mapping, uh, you have some custom fields and all those things. So everything had to be configured, right? And uh, uh, in a typical way, you would have to go to different screens. So go to the integration section to configure integrations, go to the classification mapping section to, you know, to configure uh, uh, which instrument goes to, uh, you know, which type of playbook and things like that. But here, everything can be done in one screen. So let's start with fetching the integration, right? So here you can see you have the integration uh, window as as you see in the integration section. Uh, so you can provide uh, the URL, you can provide your API key, you can provide you know uh, the key ID API, all the configurations as it is. And then once you save it, uh, let me just start populating this. Okay, and then you can do all the other configurations and you can test it as you normally do on the integration screen. So once it's complete, you can just save and exit, right? So at this point, even though you are doing the integrations and you are uh, you know, uh, saving the integrations, uh, the integration itself will still be in disabled state. The idea is we don't want to enable this integration right now and fetch incidents when all the other configurations are not done. 
So it could happen that some of the tasks might not be able to complete because we still haven't done the other integrations, right? Or the other configurations in order. So for that reason, uh, all the integrations that you do on the wizard is going to be in disabled state until you complete the entire step and enable your use case. So the next step is go into the, I can choose the, okay, I'm going to choose the type. So now you can start configuring the playbook itself. So uh, in this playbook, uh, right, in this uh, playbook, we have given a lot of options uh, using which you can customize how the playbook uh, behaves depending upon your requirement, right? So for example, as part of the malware investigation pack, the, you know, the playbook can retrieve file. So do you want to do this? If yes, true. If you don't want to, you can just make it false, right? So that way, if you don't want to do some actions, you can just skip it. So let's see the other options that you have, right? So do you want to detonate files? So do, if you have a sandbox integration, do you want to go ahead and detonate the files? Again, if you want to, you can say true. If you don't want to, like for example, you're using uh, you know, uh, a solution with, let's say a public API and you don't want to send those files automatically, you can make it false and you can do that uh, you know, separately as a manual step, right? Uh, do you want to do deduplication? Again, say yes or no true or false. Uh, you can mention which is the ticketing uh, system that you want to use. So we have uh, the options here. Uh, you can say either Jira or ServiceNow. Uh, and then you can also change your tags, right? So how do you want to tag your indicator? So if you already have uh, uh, EDLs and if, if you already have queries uh, which are going to find malicious tag, you can use those existing tags or you can also leave the default ones. And then you can also choose to either do auto isolation of uh, you know of endpoints, or you want to manually take those actions. And we'll uh, you know uh, showcase how you can even if you choose to do this manually, uh, how the pack is built in so that the analyst can uh, isolate just at a click of a button. Right. So we'll also showcase that as we go forward. Right. And these are uh, the benign tag uh, when something is uh, set as false positive. And then uh, if you're also getting uh, uh, incidents from SIM, there are some configurations for that. So if you are going to send your uh, uh, EDR alerts to SIM and you want to extract all the alerts from SIM, you can still make, make use of this claim, right? So it's not just uh, directly fetching from the EDR, but even other sources, you can configure this. So once you have done all these integrations, uh, you, know, you can just uh, click on done. So this configuration is complete. Now you can then go ahead and configure all the other, uh, you know, uh, integrations that you that you have selected, uh, and just like here, right? So every time you configure the integration, you will see either a green tick, and if there is some error, that will also be showcased, right? So I'll just go into another screen where all this is already done. Yeah, here you can see, right? So you can configure everything. And if any of your integrations uh, is having some kind of an issue, an error will be showcased, and then you can have a look at it and uh, change the values accordingly. So once you have done uh, all these configurations, the next step is going to be enable the use case and then turn on a use case. So once you do this, then all the integrations will be enabled and it will start fetching the instance and the playbook will start executing for those instances. So this is how simple it is while using deployment editor to configure the entire pack, right? So it just takes a few minutes once you have all the parameters, all the integrations, uh, you know, settings ready with it. So now let's go into an incident and have a look at, uh, you know, have a look at the incident itself. Right. So this is the malware investigation. So if you see this, this entire layout is designed in such a way uh, that uh, you know the the key information that the analyst would need for uh, for this incident is made available. Right. So in a quick glance, you can see all the information about the source. Uh, you can see the information about uh, the device of the device that was you know affected from where the alert got generated. You can see information about the user. Uh, and you know there are there are some more information, right? And all these information is collected as part of the playbook, and we'll we'll see that soon, right? So apart from that, we also collect and uh, you know showcase a lot of information 
uh, from XTR itself, right? So here you can see the uh, the more more alert details from XTR. So you can see what are the files that were involved in this incident, and you can see the reputation of that. Uh, and you know, based on MITRE techniques, you can also see what are the different techniques that were identified as part of this incident. So all this information can make it uh, much easier for the analyst to understand what's happening and uh, you know wherever uh, his input is required, he can provide based on all this populated information. And then we also collect the forensics information. So in this scenario, uh, depending upon, uh, you know, uh, uh, it's highlighted here, right? So what are uh, the different tools and based on their capabilities, information will be, will be populated. So in this case, uh, with, with the help of XTR or CrowdStrike uh, integration, we can actually connect to the endpoint and get a process snapshot as well. So you can see what are all the process running. So, you know, for, for some reason, if this malicious process uh, is still running, you, you can still, you can see it and then, you know, uh, decide accordingly on your remediation plan. So now let's uh, take a look at the playbook. So the first playbook, uh, you know, so the, we have lot, we have like playbooks and a lot of sub playbooks that are, uh, you know, configured uh, to help make different decisions and trigger the different actions. So this is the, uh, the first playbook, the malware incident handler. So this in general, just tries to identify what is the source of the alert. And based on that, what is the uh, tools, the integrations tools that's configured, and it will choose the respective sub playbook, right? So as you can see, we have very detailed playbook for Microsoft Defender, for CrowdStrike and XTR. So in this case, since I have chosen XTR as my integration, it is uh, triggering this sub playbook. So when we go into this uh, sub playbook, right? So uh, we start with the incident enrichment. The first uh, step that's going to happen is incident enrichment. As part of the incident enrichment, we take the actual incident ID and then we go ahead and get all the other information from XTR. So you don't have to go back and forth for XTR, but in case for some reason you want to do, uh, we have uh, a link that will help you, right? So you can just click on this link and you can see the case ID. You'll directly be taken to the XTR page. So once you get all the, uh, you know, uh, once we have extracted all the uh, incident details, we will then extract the indicators. Uh, so, so, you know, the indicators will be extracted and the enrichment will happen in the backend. And at the same time, we will also start looking at uh, getting all the endpoint details. So with the help of, uh, you know, uh, uh, Active Directory or other integrations, we can actually get information about the endpoint, get more details about, you know, uh, what type of OS it was running, what is the IP address, and, you know, you, even if the status is online or not. So once we have that, uh, you know, we have the steps where all the, uh, all the layout sections will be populated. At the same time, if the uh, 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 if the alert has given MITRE uh, technique IDs, we can then go to uh, use the MITRE uh, attack integration and fetch all this information uh, about the tactics and techniques used. Right. So you don't have to, you know, because typically uh, the EDR will just give an ID. So you don't have to then go and Google or search for this ID somewhere else. All the information is right here in in this incident. And then you can also do uh, user enrichment. So depending upon which, who was the user who triggered certain actions, you can actually get, uh, take that, go back to your active directory and fetch more information about the user. Okay. So once the enrichment is complete, the next step is going to be triaging. Yeah. So, uh, uh, the, so the next step is going to be deduplication. So uh, in, in this case, what happens is uh, if, if you select uh, to deduplicate and if you have multiple incidents, right? Uh, so uh, 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 XOR is going to find that there are open incidents and it will link the existing incident to an older open incident, right? So that way you don't have to do all the process multiple times. So that's the idea of deduplication. But again, right, as you, as you saw during the configuration, it's a choice, you can either use it or you can just skip that. And then, uh, you know, the next uh, check is going to do is uh, to see if the device is isolated or not. 
So if the device is already isolated, then we don't have to do all these actions because there is some action already taken. So you can then directly go into the decision phase. Right? So we'll see what the decision phase is. But now, since our device is not isolated, these are the other actions that it will do. The playbook will then uh, you know, perform advanced hunting. So during the advanced hunting, the playbook is going to run different queries inside XTR to find out uh, what are the related alerts, what are the relevant alerts based on the MITRE uh, technique IDs, as well as IOCs that we identify during the enrichment. So once we do that, we also uh, you know, uh, check for uh, the device. If the device status is online, we already have that information. And since it's online, we will also go get the process information from the device. Right. So we get a snapshot of the process from the device. So once we have this, we also do the command line analysis. So what the command line analysis do, does is, uh, you know, there is a very detailed check that happens to see uh, what, uh, how exactly was this process started and, uh, you know, is there any uh, obvious uh, uh, indications that this was indeed a malicious process, right? Somebody trying to do uh, something to either harm the system or collect some information. So as part of the command line analysis, uh, we extract the command line information and we validate if the information is encoded. So even if uh, you know uh, the attacker has uh, uh, encoded the command line parameters, uh, we can uh, decode that uh, you know the parameter and then validate it. Right. So we can once the decode happens, we will extract the indicators from the command line, and then we will try to find. Uh, are there any additional indicators found, right? So is there any new indicators found? If yes, go ahead and enrich it. And, uh, you know, uh, continuing with the analysis, we also find out if there is any network activity parameters as mentioned. So is is the, uh, you know, during the command line, uh, is he trying to download some files? Is he trying to connect to an outside system? Check for malicious tools used. So, uh, 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 you know, this uh, this task will check uh, some of the famous tools like Mimikatz and other tools, if those tools were used during this, uh, uh, you know, command line, we also check for various parameters, uh, which which is suspicious. And we also check for, uh, you know, uh, any AMSI evasion techniques, right? So did the, uh, did the attacker try to use some, uh, you know, some parameters which can help uh, uh, or which are known uh, that attackers uh, used to uh, evade uh, malware scanning, right? So all these checks are done. So once these checks are done, uh, we now have more information. We know that, okay, uh, you know, whatever the file that was executed, was uh, was it done from command line? And did somebody actually try to, uh, you know, do it with a malicious intent? Um, so once, once this part of the triaging is done, right? So we go back into the main playbook. Uh, and we have now collected all the information as part of the triaging, right? So we have seen, uh, we have seen the process. We have seen, uh, you know, we have done threat hunting to find out what other uh, activities have happened around the endpoint, around the IOCs. We have seen, uh, uh, and you know, as part of the check, we also do, uh, uh, you know, we check for any preventive preventive action already taken, right? So especially if you have an EDR. If you have already blocked the file, we validate that. If not, there are different things to do. And then, uh, for some reason, right? If we also uh, uh, we also try to see the file that uh, triggers this alert, is this file known or not? Right. So, in case the file is uh, known, we we can directly go and get the information from the threat intel about the file. But in case the file is not known, right? So, typically, uh, let's say next year, if the local analysis has triggered an alert. Uh, and we don't have uh, uh, more information from the threat intelligence, we can actually extract that file, right? We can connect to the system, we can extract that file, and using the uh, uh, dynamic analysis integration like wildfire, we can upload the file, wait for the analysis to happen, and extract that analysis report as well. So all this information uh, will help in finally understanding if this uh, incident is a true positive or a false positive. So now we come to the conclusion part, right? So we have now collected all the information uh, and here we stop at a uh, manual action where the analyst has to now come in and decide what, what should we do next, right? But if you see uh, from the snapshot itself, we know that there is a file that is malicious. 
uh, you can see the file. You can try to identify if the file is known to you or not. So if the file is not known to you, if the file is malicious, you, know, you can come to a conclusion that this could be a true positive and provide your comments. So now the next actions are going to start. Okay, let's just go look at the response actions now. I'll briefly explain, uh, you know, what are the false positive actions also that are designed. Yes, moment. So as part of the response actions, uh, what we would try to do is, uh, you know, uh, we will try to uh, delete the files. We will try to isolate the system. Uh, all these things are designed. Just one moment, I'm not sure why. Okay. All right. So, uh, you know, uh, now that we have uh, gone into the response actions, so as part of the response actions, the first thing is we will look at instant auditing, right? So, if you want to create uh, uh, additional tickets in ServiceNow or Jira so that there is a record, uh, we know that there is a true positive security incident. So, in case you want to have a record and store all the information there, uh, that step can be done. And then we will go ahead with start cleaning the malicious files. So in this case, if you see, we have multiple files that are there. So there is a command file from where this file was actually triggered. So you might not want to delete this, right? So you can just mention which is the file that you want to delete and submit this. So now uh, the playbook will trigger the action in X, uh, using the XTR to go ahead and delete the file from the endpoint. At the same time, uh, you know, the system will check if it is designed to do auto isolation. So in this case, we had actually chosen auto isolation as um, fail this Okay, so it will then uh, you know try to execute the auto isolation. And at the same time, uh, we also have indicators, right? So we know that there are multiple files that are there. And the, the playbook will now ask you, so which of these file indicators do you want to block? And I think the easiest way to do that is you can go to the investigation tab and you can have a look at all the file indicators that are there. And you can choose that which is the one which is actually, uh, you know, uh, malicious, right? So this is the one that's malicious. You can just go to the incident task and say that, okay, uh, this is the malicious one. I just want to block this. Let's go and look at all these transactions. Let's try to. Okay. So there was an issue with, uh, you know, the endpoint isolation. So that's the reason for the error. But okay. So once the uh, once the endpoint isolation is complete, it would then uh, you know uh, go ahead with uh, closing the playbook. Just give one last second. It should be successful. Okay. All right. So uh, once the endpoint isolation is complete, uh, uh, you know the playbook will close, and it would then uh, go ahead and close the XOR incident as well. So here you have it. So once the system uh, has been isolated, you will actually get all the information, which is the endpoint that has got isolated, all the information will be present. So once this is done, uh, it would then go ahead and close the uh, close the incident. And what happens is, uh, you know, uh, since we have the mirroring enabled, 
at the instant level as well as XTR level. Uh, so when the XOR instant is closed, we will parallelly go ahead and even update the XTR as well. So the alert in XTR as is closed. Right? So the same uh, comment, all the information is reflected in XTR as well as service now. So you don't have to do ma uh, manual steps of going and copying information in multi multiple places. Okay. So this is the end of it, right? So as part, we, we saw that, uh, you know, what happens as part of the enrichment, uh, once the enrichment is done, do the triaging. Once the triaging is done, do the remediation. So once the remediation is done, uh, close the incident and close the playbook. So this is, uh, you know, uh, uh, something that again, right? So is uh, is already supporting a lot of uh, 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 the leading EDRs and uh, other tools. Apart from this, let's say that uh, you know there are maybe some tools that you want to add that you want to include. Uh, or some tools that are not there, right? So uh, as all the other Cortex, uh, you know, automations, uh, all these playbooks, all these, uh, 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 all the components of these packs can be customized. So the playbook itself, uh, you know, you have the option of detaching it and, uh, you know, making custom actions. Right. So you have the accident endpoint, malware investigation. So you can look at everything and you can, you know, choose to uh, customize this. Uh, you can just make a copy of this and start adding additional uh, fields, or you can also detach and start adding additional fields. So here's the malware investigation one. So let's say that you want to, uh, you know, do some additional task as part of the hunting. You want to include uh, some other other tools while collecting information for forensics. You want to add uh, more steps while doing sandbox analysis. So all those things can be done by, uh, you know, just uh, detaching the playbook. So when you detach the playbook, uh, uh, if we are pushing any updates, you will not be seeing that update. Uh, but yeah, if you want to customize and make sure that you can you follow your own uh, version, your own process of this use case, uh, you can do this. Or you can also make a copy of this playbook. You can duplicate this playbook and uh, you know uh, make all the changes there. So that way, as and when we are sending updates, you can have a look at that and any updates which you feel could be relevant for you, you can also replicate that in your version of the playbook, right? And not just playbook. This this kind of actions can also be done. Uh, let's say uh, you we you have the layouts and you want to change the layout, right? So you want to uh, maybe change the way uh, some information is uh, presented. Uh, maybe you want to let's say for example. Uh, uh, the response actions, right? So these are the actions uh, which can actually uh, take, uh, make some changes to the endpoints, uh, you know, extract files, kill process, and things like that. So if you feel that these are some things which only maybe uh, a more senior analyst should have access to, you have options of uh, making this available only to uh, uh, those users, right? So you can make changes, uh, uh, changes like that to suit. Uh, your process and uh, uh, you know uh, your requirements. Okay, so yeah, I think uh, uh, one thing that I missed is let's quickly go look at uh, the. So in this scenario, right? So yeah, we were trying to do something, and the isolation of the endpoint uh, failed at that point. So let's say that the endpoint is still online, and you still want to go ahead and isolate it. You can just click on isolate endpoint, and this is going to trigger the action, and it is now going to go and isolate the endpoint. So the isolation was submitted successfully, and as soon as the endpoint is online, it will isolate it. Or on the other side, let's say that uh, you know uh, the endpoint was isolated. Uh, you waited for some time. Uh, uh, you know the complete remediation, all the actions are done. So you now want to unisolate the endpoint. So you have a button, you can just click on this. So this will trigger the action so that the endpoint is unisolated and the user can then start using the endpoint. 
right? Or if uh, uh, or during the forensics, if you found that the process is running, you can also uh, you know uh, uh, look at killing the process, right? So all these actions can be done with uh, you know with these buttons provided. With. And uh, uh, you know, I, and actually, uh, some of these actions are also designed as part of uh, the false positive. So that's one part of the playbook we didn't see. We'll briefly look at that. So let's say that uh, after the triaging, uh, uh, the analyst finds that maybe uh, you know the file that uh, triggered this alert was uh, a file that you uh, that was created internally, and uh, even though it looked like it was actually doing something harmful, it was not. So you can go and uh, look at the. Uh, uh, look at the false positive. Uh, you can choose the false positive steps. And what the false positive steps will do is anything that was done as part of the preventive actions, it will undo that, right? So, for example, if the file, uh, uh, you know, was added to the block list, it will uh, look at allowing that file, right? Uh, if the endpoint was isolated, it would go ahead and isolate that endpoint. And there, there is a workflow written to it. I will just quickly. false positive instant handling so it can actually unisolate uh, you know uh, uh, the host uh, uh, you know check for approval and then unisolate the endpoint and you can also you know, if the uh, uh, ioc was uh, uh, you know blocked or added to block list it will then make sure that the ioc gets added to the whitelist so that way uh, uh, you will not even get future false positive uh, incidents from xdr right uh, or from your EDR too, because uh, you have you know that file, you know that this file is safe, so you add it to the blacklist or the allow list, and uh, uh, that that file will be whitelisted, and you stop receiving these alerts and these incidents. Okay, so yeah, uh, uh, so this is all I had as part of uh, you know today's demo. I think what we saw was uh, an intro introduction to the malware pack. Uh, we saw how easy it is to deploy the entire pack, uh, which pretty much handles an entire end-to-end -end incident, uh, a malware type of incident, uh, using the deployment wizard in, in a few minutes. Uh, we saw the various things that the playbook will do, uh, which includes, uh, uh, you know, uh, detailed enrichment, uh, detailed triaging, and, uh, 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 you know, uh, a comprehensive remediation uh, and response plan. Uh, and we also saw that in case you want to make changes to these playbooks to make it more, uh, you know, suitable to your process and your organization goals, you can also do that by customizing it, by detaching it, or making a copy of this uh, uh, playbook and the other parts of this pack. Okay, uh, so uh, that was part of the demo. Uh, I think we are now open for questions. Um, while the team is uh, is writing down the questions via the Q and A widget, um, I just wanted to say uh, two items. Um, we are uh, doing two more things uh, related to this flow. We are both capitalizing on the amazing adoption that we've seen so far, as we are releasing a newer version of the model investigation response pack. Uh, hopefully next week. Uh, where you would be, you would be able to see the updates via the marketplace. We're going to have collateral uh, information and blogs to do that. And of course, based on uh, your uh, review and ask, we can also do one more webinar um, in the additions. Um, and um, we would we are also um, very open to receive feedback and ideas either via the CSEs or via AHA. Uh -huh. uh, feel free. To open ideas there which are related to uh, this use case or other use case uh we capitalize and thrive on the engagement of our customer base and are happy to receive any form of feedback in any way possible um putting time back to the questions
Um, yes, the deployment wizard is only available as of 6.8. Um, as of 6.9, we've added more features related to the wizard. Um, so you're um, uh, happy to uh, update um, in order to, to see. Of course, you can use um, the malware investigation and response path even if you're in 6.6, .6, but just without the wizard. Um, false negative from sandbox handled in the playbook. Not sure I'm uh, understanding it, but um, I will let Sasha and the team uh, review this one. So basically the termination of false positive or false negative or true positive, whatever you like to call it, on the incident itself being done by the analyst. So we are providing the information that we made uh, through the playbook. And basically all the enrichments are being presented on the layout itself. Uh, even if it's in the evidence board or it's in the investigation tab, it depends on what you need. So eventually the analyst will de be the one that determined the um, incident classification. I hope that answers this question for you. So we have another uh, question here. If the current malware investigation and response pack is actually supporting uh, Curadar, Splunk, other SIM solutions or other uh, EDRs. So the answer will be yes for Splunk and Curadar. We are supporting uh, uh, ingesting incidents from uh, those SIM solutions and basically um, track it down uh, and understand what was the incident, ability to determine what was the endpoint or endpoints involved in that incident and, and make the correlation between the incident from SIM and the EDR itself. Uh, however, we currently support only CrowdStrike, and Microsoft Defender and XDR in this specific uh, pack. And the reason is because we uh, are using some of their APIs in order to enrich the incident data, such as uh, retrieving a process list, uh, as you saw in the demo. And that's why we are supporting only three of them. Hope that answers your question. So, yeah, uh, I think there was a uh, question on, uh, uh, yes, yeah, in the middle, but that was already answered. Also, there was a question, uh, how do we set the permission for selected section in instant layout? So uh, this feature is added. Uh, I think, uh, I'm not sure of the version, but uh, in the layout section, uh, you have the option of uh, 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 of setting permissions to these specific sec sections of the layout. Um, okay, um, one more question regarding the, the mimicking. Um, so yes, of course, uh, we strive for full automation um, and whenever the investigation is closed within X. So um, if the mirroring feature is enabled within your integration instance, we're going to mirror it back the investigation and of course close it in either Cortex XDR, MSD, um, or Cortex like Falcon. Um, I want to, uh, uh, to wrap this webinar up um, and to thank you all for joining in and asking questions. Um, we will be uploading uh, the webinar uh, to the live community and of course send the recording to you, but we'll also upload the Q&A that you have asked along with our uh, questions and along with our answers to them. And of course, we are also uh, going to uh, give you the possibility to ask uh, more questions in the live community. We'd be happy uh, to answer your questions uh, as we learn from them uh, as well. Um, and I want to thank you um, one more time again for uh, joining in for for asking questions. Um, well, uh, we're happy uh, to see the engagement um, of this pack. Um, please feel free to um, fill the survey uh, once the webinar is ended. Um, as long as uh, as it is valuable to you and there is demand, of course, we'll uh, capitalize and continue uh, to provide those to the benefit of the community. Uh, thank you all and have a good day.